Every year, millions of people pour into the San Francisco Bay Area. During the day, they try on Prada shoes at Union Square, cram into Powell Street cable cars, and toss snacks at the sea lions at Fisherman's Wharf. But after dark, most of the tourists are clueless about the salsa scene, the late night passion of hundreds of local dancers, musicians, and DJs. I'm from DC, and back in the 70s, the big radio stations played James Brown, West Montgomery, Motown. But on Saturday afternoons in my neighborhood, Adams Morgan, the Latinos threw open their windows and blasted everybody with Hector Laveau and the Fania All Stars. I think it's been a salsa explosion in the Bay Area. You can literally dance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, who are these people? The Afro Cuban music fanatics. Coming from a native San Franciscan home and having, I'm the youngest of five, so I, I grew up with a lot of different types of music, R&B, um, you know, my mother used to listen to rancheras and stuff. I think my first real Latin gig was playing with some, I got a call to play the, uh, um, I don't even remember the name of the band. It was a group that was playing up a club, Ele Elegante, at the top of Mission Street, they're like above Caesars Club, like 30th in Mission, and they needed a trombone play, that was like 1980, 1981. Well, I think, you know, I was listening to music much early on, coming from a musical family, you know, my mother was a guitar player, and my father was a drummer. There was a lot for me to be said about the Desi Arnaz show, you know, Lucy, Lucille Ball, and I couldn't wait to see little Ricky playing. The salsa people are often transplants from all over the world, each armed with his unique culture, spirit, and musical sensibility. Um, well, I was born and raised in Montevideo, Uruguay, South America, capital of Uruguay. And I grew up listening to uh, Uruguayan folklore music and rhythms like candombe. You know, in my house, there's always a gran combo sonora ponceña while my hand was cleaning. So I didn't listen to any type of music. I don't listen to Cuban music. I don't listen to boleros, just salsa. Salsa and every day. The Bay Area Cuban community may be small in numbers, but its presence is huge in terms of art, music, and dance. World-renowned artists such as Orestes Veloto, Armando Paraza, Roberto Borrell have kept Cuban music and dance at the center of the Bay Area salsa scene. Afro-Cuban music is the heart and soul of what salsa is about. The African roots of, of uh, salsa, I mean, you can really feel kind of in one Cuban salsa song, you can feel kind of the progression of the music from Africa to current times. You feel that in one song, you can feel that. Since the 1940s, New York City has been the mecca for danceable Latin music. Icons like Tito Puente and Perez Prado whip the dancers into a mambo frenzy at the Palladium Ballroom. But in the Bay Area, we have different sounds, moves, and vibes. I think of everything we do here as being so hybrid. So we have so many different, we don't have one set Puerto Rican community, one Dominican community, one Cuban community. That's why we get, we end up doing so many, or the, the possibility of so many different things and styles happen come out, coming out of this area. Because no one has to stay in one camp for whole. The thing that, that all of us need, and, and not everybody is willing to, to acknowledge, is that we need each other. We need each other.